You can't really talk about the Pythagorean theorem without starting, I think, with the problem of doubling the square. This is an amazing, very clever little problem uh, that's very ancient. Plato talks about this. And the problem is this. How can you build a square that has double the area of some starting square? Let's say we're starting with this one. It's a one by one square. How do we find a square that's double the area? Well, the first thing to try is to just Double the side lengths. Build a square that's twice as long on both sides. So there it is. And right away we can see that we've failed. This is not the square we were looking for. It has an area that is four times the original square. Too bad. But somewhere between this square and the starting square, there must be one that actually is double the, the size of the original square, the area of the one by one square. How can you find it? Well, it's actually lurking in this drawing. There's something you can add that will make it just jump out. So I'm, pause the video, see if you can sketch it out on your own and find it, because I don't want to spoil it. And now here is the spoiler. You can see it by adding lines right there. You make those connections. The blue shape is a square. All the sides are the same. All the angles are the same. And it's half the area of the big square. Look at it. It's half of the uh, area of the square is inside it and half is outside it. So it must be double the starting square. You could vary this question and, and just notice that the blue square that you've built is uh, the square that is on the diagonal of the starting square. So you could ask this question, what is the area of that square both on the diagonal? And well, we already know that it's twice the area of the starting square, and we can see this another way by cutting it up into triangles. Each triangle is half of the one by one square, two of them make the one by one square, four of them make the blue square, so the blue square must be twice the area of the original one by one square. I like doing it this way, this varying the question, and it actually gives us a whole new direction to go, which is this. If you take a rectangle, let's say this one by two rectangle, and build a square on its diagonal, what's the area of that square? I'm going to let you try this right now also. So you can pause and, and see if you can get any ideas. And here, here's my way of approaching it. You just need to build the square first, and you can do that by kind of duplicating the picture and angling it. And if you do that a couple times, you actually get the full picture with that nice red square inside. So. What is the area of the red square? Well, what you can do to figure it out is notice that it's the area of the whole square with those corner triangles cut away. So the area of the red square should be the entire square minus those four triangles. I'm talking about these triangles. There's two of the four of them. And notice that you can put them together to form a rectangle, your original one by two rectangle, which means that four of those triangles should form exactly two of those rectangles. So the area of the red square will be nine, which is the area of the entire square, minus two of the rectangles. Of course, each rectangle is two squares, two one by one squares, so two of them will be four one by one squares. The area of the red square is nine minus four, which is five. This is pretty nice, and it actually suggests that we can use this kind of method to find the area of the square built on the diagonal of any rectangle. So I'm going to end this video in a minute, but I want to leave you with some problems to try out before we tackle the Pythagorean theorem in its refined, more modern form. So let's start with this one. What is the area of the square built on the green diagonal? That's a one by three rectangle. What about a one by four rectangle? And if you get tired of drawing these squares, you can try just doing this in greater generality just by drawing a rectangle and seeing if you can still repeat the argument. I'm going to leave it there for now, but I'll be back soon with the sequel.